Hey everyone, it's been a while since we had an evaluation kit to look at, but fear not, our dry spell has come to an end because our friends at Renesas have sent me an evaluation kit to look at in this somewhat oversized electrostatic bag and it's an EKRA6M4 for your delectation. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. Before we plunder the anti-static bag for its eval kit contents, we should probably spend a moment getting a handle on what it is we're evaluating with our eval kit. In this case, we're looking at a Renesas RA6 M4 microcontroller. And this is where that device fits in with all the other members of the RA family of microcontrollers. The RA6 is based on a 200 MHz ARM Cortex M33 processor. And just to remind you, in case you've forgotten, this was one of the original ARM V8 architecture devices, which came packed with goodies like the floating point unit and digital signal processing unit to accelerate these functions. There's also the memory protection unit that provides programmable secure memory regions that will return a fault when accessed by software that doesn't have the right privileges. I suppose the big leap for ARM with these cores was in security with the trust zone tech which provides hardware isolation of secure memory space zones to keep things like recovery code or encryption keys safe from software attack while still allowing their use by application code. When we look at the RA6 device itself, we can see that it offers a broad array of I.O. favourites like I2C, SPI, CAN bus and even an Ethernet Mac. Lots of memory, a healthy amount of analogue input and output and there are eight DMA channels for dealing with large data blocks. And we also have a capacitive touch sensing unit on there too. So all in all, this is a pretty robust all-rounder that you can turn to any number of applications. We'll look at the software for developing these applications in part two of this video series. But right now, I think it's time we got our dev kit out from its anti-static bag. Right then, here's our anti-static bag. First order of business is going to be to use our trusty old scissors to get inside here. There we go. So now we can finally get our box out. And here it is. So it's clearly telling us that we have an eval kit for the RA6 M4 MCU. And if we turn the box over, on the back we have some more information. Listing the key features of the kit and telling us how to get started with the preloaded Blinky example. And there's also a link to the kit documentation and dev tools. That's always handy. So that's the outside of the box and how it presents itself. So far so good. Let's see now, how do we get inside? That looks to be stuck down with tape. So let's get a nice clean cut here and we can open this up now. And at the top here, we have an insert card with some links to resources and support. I'll put that to one side, keep it safe, and I'm sure I'll need that soon enough. Below that, we have an inner box that looks somewhat reminiscent of what you might see in an iPhone box. And inside, if I can get it, is our cabling. Oh. Um, what's this? USB to micro USB? And a female USB to micro USB cable. And finally, we have an Ethernet cable. Pretty short, uh, but that's okay. Below that, we've got another box with. Let's have a look. Oh, there's our eval board uh, in its own protective bag. Uh, 
Let's put that down and see if there's any more. Uh, let's see. Uh, no. That's just for padding. So we'll put that back. And here's our board. So let's just flip it over and open it up. Come on. Here we go. Uh, Hey, voila! And turn it over, and here it is. Let's just move this and get a closer look. And I'm going to freeze the video here so we can take a tour of the EVOL kit features. The first thing that you'll probably notice is the layout of the board, which is separated into three distinct areas. To the left is the microcontroller access area, which gives a user direct access to the MCU pins through the headers that you can see surrounding the device. In the middle is the special features area, and we'll expand on what's here in a moment. But our final area is the I.O. section, where we power the board, debug software and can add expansion boards. This final section is standardised across all the RA eval kits, whereas the special features and MCU section features depend on which microcontroller is used. For example, this is what an RA2 eval kit looks like. You can see that the I.O. section has the same general layout minus any unsupported items, while the MCU section reflects a much lower pin count and there isn't a special feature section at all, as the MCU doesn't support one. Okay, so taking a closer look at the MCU section, we can see that our RA6M4 microcontroller is right in the middle there, and it's surrounded on each of its four sides by a 40 pin 0.1 inch pitch male header. These give users direct access to the MCU pins so they can use the prototyping support in whatever way their creativity takes them, including creating custom daughter cards. The headers are keyed and each supply 3.3 volts and ground to help support that. This section also has MCU and USB current measurement points so users can keep an accurate tab on how much power their application is using. And we also find the clock generation circuitry here. Turning to the special features area, we have the Ethernet Phi with an RJ45 connector that has integrated magnetics, and it's situated so that we can plug in our Ethernet cable on the board edge. We also have a 64 megabit Octo SPI flash alongside a 32 megabit Quad SPI flash. As you might expect, these devices use 8 SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface data lines or 4 SPI data lines respectively to transfer data to and from the flash memory devices. And moving along, we come to what's probably the busiest area of the board, the I.O. section. There are a lot of debug options here, starting with the debug USB connector that uses a single wire debug or SWD to debug with and connects directly to our development PC. On the opposite side we have a user USB connector that can operate as either a host or a device. This is our debug controller running Sega J-Link firmware. There's a 10-pin header that supports external SWD or JTAG debuggers and a 20-pin header supporting SWD, JTAG and ETM. There's also an orange LED that lets us know that debug drivers have been detected. In terms of ecosystem expansion, we have lots of standardised options. In the middle, we have Microelectronica Microbus Connector, and either side of the Microbus Connector, we have standard Arduino connectors. And outside of those, we have two Digilent PMOD connectors. Along the top edge here, we have two Seed Grove system connectors, either side of a SparkFun Quick connector. And, of course, each of these standards support their own particular mix of I2C, SPI, UART and analog or digital I.O. connections. And finally, we have blue, green and red LEDs, plus two buttons for user I.O. The red button is the reset button. Just to round things off, this is the 5V and this is the 3.3V test clamping loop. This is the onboard 5V to 3.3V LDO. 
and this is the white power LED. And if I just flip the board over so you can see the reverse side, you can perhaps see that Renesas have included quite a few disconnect traces for lots of the features on the board. So that is what our EK RA6M4 eval board looks like. Well, that's about it for this video, but thanks for watching and keep your eye out for part two. See you soon.